Great. Right. Okay. Right. I do apologise. Technology is always good. Um, however, we are there, and it's um, and it's just after ten past seven. So, so thank you very much once again for joining us. Okay. So, who am I then? So, my name is uh, Mark Hayes. Okay, I'm a warrant officer in the Royal Marines. Um, I've been a Royal Marine commando for the last thirty-two years. Uh, so that's a long time. Uh, so I basically joined up. Uh, in 1990, started my kind of application process in 1989, uh, and where you guys are now, because I was in the cadets as well, um, uh, I was about 12, 13, 14 when I was in the cadets, all right, um, during 82, 83, when the Falklands and everything else um, was happening, all right, in 82, uh, that's when I decided to join the Royal Marines, I was lucky enough to get through the application process, went down to my lo local careers office in, um, in Leeds, OK, uh, and then a one officer in there um, looked at me, um, enjoyed what he, he, he looked at. I, I was doing the press ups, the sit ups, all the physical fitness stuff in the AVCO at the time. We can't do it now, but we could do it in the AVCO at the time. Uh, and then I did my kind of PRMC. We call it RMCPC now. Uh, I went into training in January of 1990, passed out later that year. Uh, 32 years on, I am now here as a career advisor for Greater London and the South East, so GLSE. So thank you very much um, for coming along tonight. So I'm gonna split this down in a couple of areas. So we are gonna quickly talk about the Royal Navy, all right, because the Royal Marines is part of the Royal Navy, yeah, and we need to know about the Royal Navy, um, um, the overlap where we come in as Royal Marine Commandos, okay? Uh, and then I'm gonna show you uh, a few videos. All right, about the Royal Marines, so you can sit back, relax, and just watch those videos. They're only a couple of minutes each, so nice and easy uh, to watch. Uh, and then we'll look at the Royal Navy website, Stroke Royal Marine website, um, because all the information now is, is on the website, and it's really good, yeah, for the instructors, for the cadets, uh, for parents and everything else to have a look on the website. Um, during COVID, over the last couple of years, yeah, the Royal Navy have spent millions on the website. And it's all updated. So, you know, where people used to come into the Armed Forces Careers Office, really good information, really good to talk to us guys. All right. But a lot of our materials now out of date because we put a lot of energy, a lot of money um, into the online application process. All right. So I'll show you a little bit about that. Uh, and then we'll finish with questions. All right. So stand by. Yeah. I want one question from each of you. All right. And if we run out of time, then obviously you can fight to your instructors. They'll fire it to me. Uh, and I'll get those answers back to you, not an issue whatsoever. Okay. So. Right, I'm hoping we don't really see and hear that. Yeah. Right, see and hear it. Yeah, not Okay. So, you, okay, there we go. Thum, thumbs up, that's what we're like. Okay, so. Um, we are part of the Royal Navy, all right, so we have to talk about the Royal Navy um, on the forefront of the Royal Marines, all right, so this is just a quick two-minute video, yeah, on a story from, from one of the um, ladies, one of the females that have joined up. A woman's place. I decided it was up to it. me where that was. Your devices. And it was in the Navy. Yep, yep, I... <laughs> Okay, really good uh, advert there then, yeah, made in the Royal Navy, all right, um, it's popular uh, around the bazaars, uh, we spent a lot of money on these kind of advertisements uh, and it's getting a lot of interest, yeah, and we're getting a lot of people coming through, all right, um, it's not just about a career, it's, it's a way of life, all right, hence I've been doing it for 32 years, I've always said, if you wake up in the morning, 
and you've got a smile on your face, you're in the right career. All right. After three or four months of, of being in a job, it doesn't matter where you are um, in the world. Yeah, if you're waking up not with a smile on your face, then I suggest you're probably not in the right career. All right. So this is why we do it. So um, did you know then? Yeah, there's over 100 roles in the Royal Navy. All right. Over 100 roles. That's massive. So if you think of an industry, yeah, B&Q, McDonald's, uh, uh, an airline, British Airways or whatever. Yeah, they don't have as many. All right. So as an organization, especially the Royal Navy Stroke Royal Marines, we have over 100 different roles. That, that's massive for a company. All right. So where do you fit in then? I know a lot of you um, or most of you are cadets for the Royal Marines. All right. So you might be thinking Royal Marines all the way down the avenue. But I always say, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. All right. And, and knowledge is power as such. So by listening to these presentations. Yeah. And it's not just about Royal Marines. It's about the Royal Navy and even try service. We can talk about yeah later on. All right. It's all about getting that information in your back pocket, having a chat with mum and dad. Yeah, and figuring out um, what suits you because don't do something that you're not 100% sure of. All right. As a Royal Marine Commander, you're well, as, you're well aware you've got to be physically fit, you've got to be state of mind, you've got to be good to go, you know, committed and everything else. All right. And if you've got that, yeah, then by all means, yeah, apply. And we'll talk about all that in a minute. So we talk about the naval services then, yeah, the branches and the roles uh, within the Navy. All right. So if you don't know, and I'm sure you do, yeah, naval service, then we have surface fleet. That's anything above the water. All right. And that includes obviously the aircraft carriers, the frigates, the destroyers, the minesweepers. Yeah. And then we have the submarine service, uh, anything below the water. All right. We have quite a few submarines uh, in the Navy. All right, and they're all based now in Faz Lane. So that's Scotland. So just about an hour north of Glasgow. All right. So that's where all our submarines are kept now. Uh, we've got the fleet air arm. Yeah, we're very lucky now. We've got the F-35, which is taken over from the Harrier. Unbelievable bit of kit. Unbelievable bit of kit. Yeah, um, state of the art. All right. Uh, and then we shared them. We've got our own in the Royal Navy. Um, but we also have um, a couple of detachments of the RAF as well. So the on board ships, you will see RAF pilots and Royal Navy pilots fly the F-35. All right. Good old Royal Marines. We'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. Royal Marines, part of the Naval Service, as you're all aware. All right, and where the fighting force, where the amphibiosity, where the sea soldiers, yeah, where the people that do the business. All right, um, Royal Fleet Auxiliary. Now, not a lot of people know about these guys. All right, um, Royal Fleet Auxiliary. They're the ones that you I mean if, if we need stores, um, weapons, food, fuel, yeah, ammo, water, whatever, and we can't get into a shore base because of operational or exercises, these are the ones that will come out and then they'll replenish uh, while we're out at sea. All right. Uh, and then, sorry, and then we've got the Maritime, the Reserve Forces. OK, and then we also have the Royal Marine Reserve Forces and the Royal Navy Reserve Forces. And the reason why we have both is purely because we understand that not everybody wants to give, yeah, 24-7 um, um, to the military. Right. So by all means, you can carry on with your day job as such, go home at night time, uh, but you can do some at, for the country and that's the reserve forces all right so the branches then within the royal navy yeah and this also includes the royal marines yeah um it's like departments in a business so branches determine the kind of work you do all right and we'll quickly just have a quick look at a, a couple of them so you can see all these then yeah people working right on the sea uh, and obviously on the land as well so benefits of joining the royal marines yeah and the royal navy yeah um it's just a great it's great isn't it? as i said earlier it's not all about um nine to five yeah you ask your parents and everything else all, all those people that are not in the military they go to work they come home uh, and then they relax around family time or do things with the family in the evening and um, well we have our own family yeah and that's the royal navy the royal marines all right so what makes it great is the fact is we all want to be there yeah nobody's forced to join yeah we all want to be there all right. Um, we have our holidays. We have adventurous training. Yeah, we have a pension. We have dental, NHS and all that is free to us. It doesn't cost us a penny. All right. And there's loads of other things that we benefit from education. OK. And if you're good at sport, then off you go. We'll let you go up. So we'll pay you in the Royal Marines or the Royal Navy. Yeah. And if you're um, an Olympian or whatever, then off you go. If you're really good at football, good at rugby, cricket, table tennis, whatever, we won't stop you. You go and do that. And if you can do it for the county level, 
you can do it for um, the UK, Great Britain, yeah, uh, then we'll let you go and do that. And we'll pay you at the same time, which is perfect. All right, so within the Royal Navy then, yeah, we have a few areas. So we have engineering, all right? So these are the people, we have three types of engineering, really. We have air engineering. So you can imagine these are the ones that look after anything in the air, be it helicopters or fast jets, the F-35. All right, we have marine engineering and we have weapon engineering. So these are the people that look after all weapons, including sidearms. And then the marine engineering is, is what you can kind of see on the left hand side. OK, which are people that um, take care of the ship, be it the engines and everything else. All right, aviation, then you can see perfect there. We've got air traffic controllers. Yeah, we've got pilots. We've got air crewmen. All right, we've got aircraft handlers. Those aircraft need to get to the place where it's going to depart or, or land. Yeah, and these are the aircraft handlers uh, and everybody else within the aviation industry within the Royal Navy. Logistics, we can't do anything without logistics. All right? We need chefs, we need caterers, we need writers. Yeah, we need people that look after our pay. If we've got issues, people that will uh, take care of us. All right? So that comes into logistics. Uh, medical, right, so big ships, we'll have, a, we'll have a full hospital, a full operations room. We'll have surgeons on board submarines. Yeah, we'll have surgeons on, on the big uh, aircraft carriers, etc. And then we'll go all the way down to medical assistants, nurses, nothing else. So anything that you get realistically in a hospital, a smaller hospital, yeah, we'll have on board uh, the bigger ships. OK, and and it's it's important to understand this because obviously, yeah, within the Royal Marines, we're part of the Navy. We don't have all these uh, individuals. All right. But when we go on operations or we go on exercise, yeah, we can tap into the Royal Navy. Yeah, to give us overall logistical and medical support. Right, warfare then. Right, so warfare is all about um, anything to do with the ship, so protecting the ship. Right, so if anything's incoming via submarine, via surface from, from another ship, um, or by air or by land, yeah, it's the warfare department that, that sees the incoming and then they react to it. Likewise, if we need to defend ourselves, the warfare department does that. And also if we need to attack something, so if we need to take out a helicopter or something on land, then it's the Warfare Department responsibility uh, to make that happen. All right, and then we have the Royal Marines Band Service, part of the Royal Marines. All right, they're fantastic at what they do. Yeah, um, obviously um, the people that join normally go to college or whatever and do something in, in the musical industry. All right, um, but we use them a lot. They're fantastic for morale and nothing else. Uh, and we use them also, so in operations or exercises, we use them as stretcher bearers, okay, to help us out. All right, so mates for life, right? You guys, you at school, you've got some good mates, all right? But once again, um, there might be some of your classmates that don't want to be there. They're not into education for whatever reason. Right? All the ones that you'll see in the Marines, yeah, and the Navy, they want to be there, all right? They're not there for the sake of being there, all right? So you meet new people, you meet diversity, right? They all come together and, and it, Honestly, it's, it's a new family. It is a new family. OK, travel the world. Best thing about the Royal Navy and the Royal Marines, OK? Uh, we're amphibious. We have water. The world is full of water. All right. Uh, we have ships, submarines, and everything else. So you're guaranteed to travel the world, all right? Um, the army is um, landlocked, all right? So unless there's a war on or whatever, really, realistically, 90% of your time you're going to spend in the UK. Yeah, and the RAF. Right, they don't have any really floating um, runways. Right, so once again, you're going to be in the UK. Perks of the Navy, though, in the Royal Marines. Yeah, we spend most of our time away, right, travelling. Royal Marines, we train hard, so we fight easy. All right, and I'll quickly talk about uh, the Royal Marines in regards, where do we operate? We'll operate anywhere. All right, we're famous for four um, kind of environments. Right, and... It, if I had you in front of me now, I'll be able to get some of them off you, but um, I'll talk to you about it and then we can do a QA and a uh, session at the end. So we're famous for mountain warfare, so mountain leaders, okay? Um, a lot of people think we're famous for the desert. Um, we will operate in any environment, all right? But realistically, we're not famous for the desert, even though you're in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq and everything else, we did operate um, very well in the desert. So mountain warfare, jungle warfare, all right? We, we, we like to um, sweat a lot. All right, so when we go out to the jungles, Brunei, Belize, they're the two main ones. We do a lot of um, operations, uh, a lot of exercises out there. Uh, amphibiosity, yeah, that has to be 
the main one. All right, we operate at sea. We use our own ships. Yeah, we use the submarines and we use the naval ships to get us from A to B. So our ships are normally flat bottomed. Right, and the reason why they're flat bottomed is so we can get closer to um, the shore. So therefore, when we deploy our fast boats or right, our landing craft, yeah, we we can get as close as we can into the sea. Right, which means really when we're out in the open waters, it gets a bit choppy. All right, it's not very dynamic. Um, flat bottoms, flat, flat bottom ships uh, when they're sailing, yeah, they tend to rock from side to side quite a bit. All right, where you've got your frigates and your destroyers, they're kind of V-shaped, right, so they can cut through the waves, yeah, and get some speed up. Right, we're completely opposite to that because we need to get uh, as close as we can uh, to shore. And the last one then is cold weather survival. So we used to call it Arctic warfare. Yeah, we call it cold weather now, all right, because we can basically go to the top end of, of Scotland, right? It's just as cold as as, um, as the Arctic, right, sometimes. All right, so cold weather survival, uh, we do that as well. So when you think about it, there's no other organisation, definitely within the UK military, uh, and to be fair, probably around the world, where we can operate in minus 30, minus 40, yeah, out in um, cold weather um, climates. We always say top of Norway, by the Foss, Tromso, because that's where we normally train every year, all right? And then we can jump on a plane and go to a desert, which is 100% humidity, all right? So we're very tactically sorted within the UK government. So realistically, they can deploy the Royal Marines in any environment in the world at any time, yeah? And they can't do that with any other outfit within the, Royal Marine, uh, within, um, the British military, all right? And that's why we are unique. And at the end of the day, we are commandos okay okay so world-class training second to none we train all the time so when people say "Oh, you're out of country again why are you you're in albania you're in you're out in the jungle you're out in the desert i mean there's, there's nothing going on out there because we train constantly the navy do it we do it and the reason why we train all the time yeah the more you train yeah the second to nature it becomes all right uh, and to be fair when you're operating in those environments you need to do a lot of training um, even to you know, rope out of a, a fast rope out of a helicopter, you know, all that good stuff, you need training, training, training. All right? So the more we do, it just means when we have to put that into action, it's a lot easier for us. Um, and every day is different. It, it really is, you know, be it the Navy or the Royal Marines. OK, some of it, it's a bit tedious, but it's only like you when you go to cadets and everything else. Sometimes you go in an evening and sometimes it's you've got to do drill again. Urgh. I don't want to do any more drill. All right. Um, we get training out of the way. We keep on training. Yeah. And then we deploy. All right. Um, and it's, it's honestly 32 years in. I've still got a smile on my face most days. OK, because I love the job that I do. And the bottom line is, if you love the job that you do, you're in the right career. All right. And, and one thing, I've never heard any Marines say I'm bored. All right. You will never, ever be bored in the Royal Marines. And that's guaranteed. OK, technology, I've slightly mentioned it then, the F-35s, we've got the new Merlin helicopter, right, that's taken over from the Sea King. So the government's thrown loads of money into the military and they have to, and rightly so. All right, we've got the best equipment. So let me just let me just throw a, a figure at you. So an F-35, OK, so it's a single pilot um, fast jet. All right, you can't have two pilots in there. It's just one pilot. All right. And his head or his helmet. It's designed purely for him, so it's not transferable. He can't hand it over to his mate. Yeah, it's purely for him. Right? The hel helmet alone is over two hundred thousand pounds. Right? That's just for the helmet, and you won't be able to see it on on here. But on the outside of this aircraft, the F thirty five, there's hundreds of tiny little cameras. So when the pilot's in the cockpit and he's looking around, he doesn't see anything. Yeah. So when you're in a car, you get those blind spots. You can see. Obviously, the controls in front of you, you can see your door handles, you can see the metal bits when you rotate your head. Yeah, in an F-35, they see nothing but sky. Right? And that's all because of these tiny little cameras on the outside of the aircraft. So if he's in a dogfight, yeah, he's not going to get blocked by a bit of metal or a bit of controls. Yeah, he can literally see, yeah, um, 270, 360 degrees all around him. All right, so um, fingers crossed he'll, he'll win that um, dogfight as such. OK, find your role then. I'm going to go into this a bit more so, but on the website, and this is where we've updated. So I've, I've done this slide so you understand. So if you type in even Royal Navy, Royal Marine careers, yeah, you come up with this and then you can have a look at uh, what you want to do. I'll go into this live in a second. Fingers crossed it will work. OK, so we've finished that part 
there, but we haven't finished yet. So what we're going to do now, yeah, we're going to go on to a couple of videos for you, all right, especially for the Royal Marine ones that um, definitely want to join. All right, so we're going to have a look at the um, commando tests. All right, so I've got three on here, all right, and you should all know now what they all are. So this is end of 32 weeks um, training. Yeah, before you get your Green Beret, which is early enough, I've got mine there. All right, so before you get your Green Beret, all right, um, you have to do four commando tests. I'm just going to show you a couple now. These are literally a couple of minutes each. Okay, so a lot of people think um, six rounds on target. Well, that's not hard. You, you, you know, you're near enough Royal Marine Commandos. It's not, it's not the fact of getting six rounds on target. The fact is, is you kept your weapon clean. Because you imagine, yeah, going through uh, a load of murder, a load of water, yeah, and the enemy is in front of you and you pull the trigger and nothing happens. Right, so it's all about keeping your weapon clean through your runs, through your mud walks, through the tunnels, through the water and everything else, all right? Because you're no good to anybody. You might be physically fit when you get to the battle, battlefield all right but if you pull the trigger and nothing happens then you're kind of useless all right so that's what that's all about and these always make me laugh because well it makes me smile i'll say smile because um i did it 32 years ago and, and i still remember um training and i still remember everything uh, that was fired at me um, which was which which is great okay so that's the first one then right we're going to go on to a second one which is a real nice one which is a thousand assault which is a book Pain when you get to the top of that wall. The pain when you get to the top of the wall is is um, it's it's interesting, shall we say? Right. The last one. Then you should all know this one. Then the thirty miler. All right. So once you pass this, you 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 presented with your green beret. Uh, thirty miler over Dartmoor. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> 
Okay, so they're the ones that you're all aware of then anyhow all right so um that's mainly it then from me but um i'm just going to quickly throw you onto the website so you can see what's on there it's amazing what you can get on this website all right so if you haven't been on there um so far please go on there it's open to everybody yeah and every bit of information that you need to know including videos and everything else is all on there so i'm going to quickly um, do a quick demo um, with you he says Okay, give me one second. Okay, so on here then. So what we've got, when you type in Royal Navy careers or whatever, it'll come up with this um, front page. Yeah, just in the middle, you've got a little button that's got Royal Marines. So if you tap onto that one, it tells you all about the Royal Marines. Yeah, and exactly, it'll give you more information than I've given you tonight. It'll give you loads of information. So it tells you all about what the Royal Marines are, what we do, okay? Uh, where can I work? Yes, yeah, so we've got the Royal Marines, we've got the band service, yeah, and we've got um, uh, the reserves. So we've got kind of three organisations within the Royal Marines itself. But when you click onto these, these are all interactive. These are really good. All right, so what does it take to be a Royal Marine? Yeah, curious determination, togetherness, yeah, amphibiosity, yeah, you've got to be physical and you've got to have cheerfulness, all right? Because you will be cold, you will be wet, yeah? And sometimes you will be miserable, all right? But you've got to smile, right? It gets you through the darkest times, it really does, all right? So, and then it tells you all about the application process, yeah? Uh, with a, if you want to go officer, if you don't want to go officer as a rating, yeah, it takes you all through everything that you want to do there, all right? So what can I do? Yeah, you go into more, all right? So and, th and then this shows you what you can do within the Royal Marines. OK, so Royal Marine Commando, it'll split it down once again. Yeah, if you want to join, obviously, you can't apply to 15 years and nine months. All right. It's nice, big red request your application. Yeah, and it will go through there. And these are the benefits. Yeah, roll at the glance, 51,000 pounds, seven, seven weeks pay, free medical and dental. Yeah, you earn during training around 15,600. OK, it goes up to 20,000 the day that you pass out travel the world yeah and you need zero qualifications to join but you need qualifications to get promoted all right so we always say whatever happens at school gcsd wise get your english get your maths all right they're the two cru uh, crucial ones all right so it's all there yeah technology now we fly drones all right so um in each section we'll have a man with a little drone yeah i've got a i've got a drone as well that i fly and it's it's really helpful now in the drone kind of world that we live in. And then we've got big drones. So before, when we hit the beach, it used to take us quite a while then to go forward because we had to wait for rations, fuel, um, our burgers and everything else. But now we've got big drones that will deliver that from ship to shore. All right. So it just cuts down the admin, cuts down the logistics. We've got to move on uh, with technology. Um, but honestly, these drones now are unbelievable. All right. Once again, then it tells you all about the pay, the benefits, qualifications. Yeah. And then there you go. All right. It tells you all about the ROP. All right. So I'll quickly mention while we're on this one then. So, you mean, when you guys um, and ladies, right, when you're ready to apply, if you want to apply, then it's 15 years and nine months. All right. And then we start you on the process. So the first things we do, yeah, we'll get into the careers office or we'll have a chat over the line. We do a psychometric test. 
psychometric tests, yeah, kind of English science maths, nowhere as hard as a GCSE, absolutely not kind of skills level. Yeah, once you pass that, we do um, a kind of online bit like this, like a Zoom call, we call it Shine Now. Yeah, we do an interview, we, we have a look at your home family background, your education, your work records, spare time activities. And, and, and you lot are in a prime um, prime kind of um, good place to be because you would say, I mean, I was or am part of the Royal Marines Cadet. So that's a big tick in the box um, for us as well. All right, and everything that you do within the cadets, we, we know that. So we do all that, spare time activity and then motivation. So why do you want to join the Royal Marines? OK, we walk and talk you through it prior to the interview. All right. And, and just remember, we're here to get you in. We're not brick wall. We're not going to stop you. But sometimes people are scared to talk to us. And I, and I don't know why. All right. My job is to get you in. And if you show motivation and commitment, we'll get into, into the Royal Marines. Not an issue. But this is all about it then. So we've got the ROP now, the recruit orientation phase, which is four weeks prior. So it's kind of a beat up course. Really good uh, four weeks. And then you do the 32 weeks uh, down at Commander Training Centre, Royal Marines down in Devon. Yeah. And then once you pass out of training, you've got to think you're going to be in training for near enough a year. All right, four weeks plus 32 plus your leave period, it, it, it basically you know, eats away a, a full year. All right, so what you need to do then is go to a commander unit, home in on all those skills that you've been taught. Yeah, and then you're going for um, probably a specialization. So there's many specializations out there. All right, you go for one of them, and then this is where you get your career path going. So your first promotion, your second promotion, third promotion, uh, and, and then fingers crossed in a few years' time few years time 10 15 years time yeah you can be a one officer two or one officer one all right um so that's it there so i'm not going to go anymore but please whatever you do over the next few weeks go onto this website yeah and it's got everything that you need yeah joining process you can see it there initial training yeah professional training all right and it's even got some um um some kind of pdf programs so physical programs for press ups sit ups and everything else that you need throughout the application process yeah pass the pre joining fitness test um that's a good one we've slightly changed it now not so much of the running more to do with planks press ups and sit ups and everything else yeah cv work all right but in this website when you look at it it will give you everything that you need including a training program all right eligible for raw marine yeah tattoos piercings criminal record medical all right it's got everything that you need OK, so I'm going to leave it on that there then. I'm going to let you have a little play of it over the weekend. All right. And I'm going to come back on. Oh, here we go. I'm going to come back into the room. Um, and I shall stop sharing my platform. Brilliant. Amazing. Thanks for that, Mark. OK. <clears throat> so cadets, anyone who's got any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box down below. Um, I'm not sure I'll get many because you've pretty much hit everything. I was thinking of questions and then you answered them all for me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that's just a terrible career advisor. I do apologize. <laughs> yeah, we, we're always good at um, answering the questions before we get given the questions. So as while the cadets are writing and thinking, I've got one for you. Um, so for, you touched a lot on joining the regular service. So some of the cadets in, in the chat right now might already have a career in mind and want to join the reserves as a Marine. Um, what would the process and how would that, like the training for that? Because obviously you wouldn't be doing 32 weeks, would you? Yeah, no, no, exactly. So it, it's good now because literally over the last couple of years, we stopped it for civilians to join as, the, uh, as reserves. It was purely had to, of being a Royal Marine Commando, to become a reservist, right? And that was purely because um, what we found with the reserves over, over a period of time is there wasn't getting, not the training that they needed, but it, there was losing some of the skills, yeah. So, you know, because of Afghanistan and everything else, we needed somebody to be ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And we found quite a few of the reservists wasn't quite there. All right. So we said, you I mean, if you was a former Royal Marine commando, then obviously you've had the skill. Yeah, you've yeah. always got it in the back of your mind, muscle memory and everything else. Then you can join the reserves and then obviously come out and, and help us out in an exercise or war zone. Um, so literally the last couple of weeks, we've reopened it up to civilians. So you don't have to be a regular. You can join the reserve forces. The application process is exactly the same. There is, there is no difference. The application process, the only difference is, is obviously you're not going to do the recruit orientation phase and you're not going to go into training for nine months. Yeah. Right. So we do that over a period of time. We understand that you have a life. Right? We understand that you might have a job. 
you might have a career, yeah, you might have been married and have kids, mortgage and all that good stuff. So what we do, we send you to one of our um, units, our reserve reserve units, okay? Uh, and then we do it over weekends, all right? But there will be a period of time where we will have to send you for a couple of weeks at a time down to Commander Training Centre so we can get most, uh, you know, quite a bit of the training done. Um, it normally takes about two years, though, to get your Green Beret. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Um, the cadets got firing loads of questions in now, so there's quite a few. Okay. There's there's a few questions about the same, saying they're not 15 and nine months. So what would be the best prep for them? So there's a range of ages. So some okay. some are 14 and stuff. So saying, what's the best prep for me to do now? Exactly what you're doing. Stay stay in the cadets. All right. There is nothing but it, and and we we don't really care. I mean, if it's um, sea cadets, marine cadets, army cadets, RAF cadets. Um, scubs, count, uh, scouts, beavers, get into some form of uniformed kind of um, uniformed organization, all right, um, because you're homing in on certain skills, right? You might even join the scouts, the cubs, or whatever, and go out and, and build bum fires and say, it doesn't matter, it's homing in on, on some of the skills that we require. Yeah, the Royal Marine Cadets, obviously, yeah, the instructors and everybody else knows exactly what we're looking for. So your weekly program should be about that as well. All right. And um, we're not too worried about you lot doing crazy physical exercise. All right. Because we've got to be careful. We, we know you're only you're in 13, 14, etc. Um, but muscle memory is key. So press ups, sit ups, pull ups. Yeah. Um, small runs. All that can be done at your age. Not an issue. All right. But it, and also map reading. Yeah. Going out and doing some orientation. All right, so you go out onto the um, onto the moors with parents, with adults, with, with guides. All right, uh, and you get some map reading done. You can do map reading in the classroom, and even for the Royal Marine instructors out there, yeah, crucial for the Royal Marines is getting early. Yeah, mag to grid, get rid, and all on all the good stuff that we do. All right, you can do that when it's really bad weather, November, December, yeah, in the UK when it's normally raining most of the time. All right, you can do classwork. Map reading is crucial. Yeah, and then you can do your um, your mag to grids and everything else, and then you can go out there when it's decent weather and home in on the skills that you've learned. Those because it takes a lot of time in training to home in on them, and not every candidate um, has done it prior. So the more you can do now, even ironing, washing, yeah, making mum and dad a cup of tea and coffee, all right, all that stuff, right, will be good for when you're in the military because you can't take mum and dad with you. Right. And really, because training is so progressive, yeah, we can only teach you a couple of times and we've got to move on. All right. So the more you do now, yeah, will um, help you later on. Well, another one, the with the band, um, what's the joining the band like? Is it 32 weeks the same or is it different? No, it's completely complete different. So you will go down to Commander Training Centre. Yeah. And you will do, um, ooh, I'm trying to think now, 10, 10, 10 to 15 weeks down there. You do 10 to 15 weeks down there. So you do the basics. You don't do the commando element. So there's no, um, you don't pass out as a Royal Marine Band commando. All right? You can be, become a commando later on in time, but not many do. All right? So you pass out as a Royal Marines Band service individual. All right? So you're not commandos. So you do the first part of training, and that's purely to get you from civilianization into the military world. All right? And then you go to a place called um, HMS Nelton, right down in Portsmouth. Right, and, um, and the building is actually an old prison. All right, so you actually spend three years down there learning a couple of instruments. Okay, um, and the reason why we use a prison is because the echo and everything else apparently is perfect. So the cells, basically, you get given a cell for three years. All right, <laughs> but we actually pay you to 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 learn in those cells. All right, and the reason why the the dean did, yeah, uh, obviously the masters within within. Um, instrument playing and everything else, the band masters and everything else. Um, that echo, that sound that you get, um, you can't get anywhere else. So it's a unique um, place to be to the point where the armies um, enjoys it. So they've actually moved in with, with the Royal Marines Band Service down in Portsmouth. Brilliant. Um, Someone's asked, would dyslexia affect a career in the Marines? Um, it could do, it all depends on how severe. Yeah, I'm not a medic. Yeah, I'm not medically trained, but obviously I'm, I've been in this career quite a while. So it's individual. What I say to anybody, if you believe um, you can't join for a medical reason, yeah, send us an email. We'll, we'll send it to our medical department. 
Um, most of it is on the website anyhow. So when I went down and you saw eligibility medical, yeah, we, we name most of them on there. Um, if it's not on there and you're unsure, yeah, all what I say is just apply. Apply, join, right, and then we'll tell you if you're eligible or not. All right, there's nothing worse four or five years down the line when you're 23, 24, 25 or whatever, you go, do you know what, I wish I applied, but I wasn't sure about whatever, right? Just if you're unsure, apply. doesn't cost you anything, all right? We'll pay for everything. We'll pay for the medical and we'll tell you if you're eligible or not. Um, someone's asked, with with the rules of saying you have to be in full-time education to your 18, would joining the Marines at 16 counteract that? Would you still be able to join? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. So so we have an apprenticeship scheme. So um, the, the kind of, I know, the, the myth of you have to go on to further education is, is false. You don't. All right. So just as long as you, you can do your GCSEs, I always say do your GCSEs. I always say, even if you don't like school, English, maths, English, maths. OK, so if, if you can't concentrate on anything else, concentrate on English, maths, because English, maths will get you um, on in the military for, for promotion and it will get you on in any career that you do um, post military service. OK, so um, you can apply at 15 years, nine months. All right. Um, the reason why we say that, but you can't join to your 16 because it takes around three to six months to get the application through. So realistically, then you've done your GSSEs, uh, then you you apply, would do the medical, the pre joined fitness, the security clearance, do all that lot. And then we'll give you an entry, entry date there after your 16th birthday. What I say to everybody, because I do a lot of outreach as well at schools and colleges, all right, if you're thinking of joining and you've got your GCSE, so it's you and you're talking January and you've got your GCSEs that summer, right, and, and, and you, you know you want to join the military, um, but you want to know what uh, education qualifications you've got. So you're not going to apply until afterwards, till probably after summer. Well, I would say don't apply before. So I always say apply six to nine months before you want to join so if you've got exams in summer of, of next year for argument's sake apply in january of next year the reason why i say that is because we can get you in we can do all the admin yeah and give you an entry date right and then we can leave you alone around april time so you can concentrate on your exams right because what you don't want to do during your exams you've got to come in and do a pre-joining fitness test you've got to do a medical we can square that all away january february march april we can give you an entry date for August, September, October. We'll leave you alone, right? You, you pass your exams, fingers crossed. You get your results. And then if you go, do you know what? Actually, I've had a chat with mum and dad and I'm going to go to college because I did better than I thought or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll just put your application on hold. It's completely fine, right? But we're getting a lot of um, post-GCSE students at the moment that are applying, but they're in a big pot. Right, so they're in the pot for six to 12 months. All right. So if you if you're really thinking about it, apply early. Once again, we're not we're not going to you know, we, we might give you an entry date, but you haven't signed a contract. Right. You, you don't owe anybody anything and you can walk away at any time. Um, you know, and, and we're fine with that. Well, um, someone's asked. I know you're not a medic, as you said before, but uh, asthma, what's the. Uh, what's the views with asthma? So, so, so the kind of policy on asthma, as I said, you I mean, if if if. If you're not 100%, then just apply, right? But normally, the kind of default setting is, if you've got an inhaler, if you've been prescribed an inhaler from the doctor, irrelevant if you've taken it or not, it's four years from that point, all right? Uh, and it might sound harsh, but the reason is, yeah, a lot of GPs, I mean, if you've got a bit of a wheeze, yeah, you've got chest infection, you get issued an inhaler. Now, you might never take it because you go, do you know what? The doctor said so, so I'm just going to take it. But the problem is we don't know that. Okay, so we'll always check with the GP. And if you're being issued an ALA, it's normally four years from that point unless you've got a good case, a case-by-case -case basis. If you've got asthma and everything else in your family and you have asthma, then once again, once you've been kind of stricken off from the GP, it's normally four years because it can come back again. And the reason why we do that, you imagine now being in the um, in the Arctic Circle, you imagine being in the jungle, you imagine being somewhere where we can't get a medic or a kind of you're in a, a serious medic to you, yeah, and you have an asthma attack. All right, it's not fair on you, it's not fair on us. We wouldn't take the risk, okay? But if you're unsure, fire me an email. We'll send it to our medics, and then they'll tell you if you're eligible or not. But it's normally four years from the last time you're prescribed an inhaler. 
Um, some questions about the fitness test. One lad's um, has been following one for a while, but due to the changes in the, the pre joiners fitness test, has, it, has any of the publications changed since then? Or is it? Uh, it depends what he's been doing. So, so the old one was the two 1.5 mile runs. Yeah, so you had to you had to run out in 12 and a half minutes and then run back in you know, in, in 10 minutes. Right, we slightly changed that because it was all about the running. Right, so we we you know, even though we did press ups and nothing else now. So if you go to the website, it will give you a PDF of exactly what we do. But it's more the planks, yeah, the press ups, the sit ups, okay, the kind of star jumps and everything else we do because it's more CV. So we know, and you've got to do that a few times. So it's not a case if you do it once, game over. Right, you've got to do it a few times. So you've got to do it a few circuits, which means if you train really hard for that, the CV, the lungs, and everything else is really good. Right, so we expect you to do the running as well. So the application process, you don't have to do any running during the application process until you get to command a training center. Yeah, when you do the Royal Marines CPC, right, which is four days, four days where you'll have to go onto Woodbury Common and you'll have to run back, which is a four mile run back in boots. Yeah, a mile and mile and a half going through the tunnel. So you're talking five, five and a half miles. All right, wet, cold, and miserable, which is great. Um we got two more questions before we hit time. So we've got this one. Um, so hay fever, has that been a problem before? Does, do you know if that's an obstacle? Um, do you know what? Who who doesn't have hay fever? You know what I mean? We all get the sneezes and everything else, especially when the pollen's high and everything else. But it, it, it's if you're being diagnosed severe. So we will, once again, during the medical, we'll test you. But everybody sneezes. That, that's not an issue. All right, everybody sneezes, everybody has some form of hay fever, all right? But some people are diagnosed with major hay fever where the eyes are watering, yeah, the nose is blocked up, yeah, they have to take tablets and everything else. Yeah, that could be an issue. So it's all about if you have to take medication, right? That's the main thing because if you're in a place where we can't give you that medication, yeah, and you have some form of uh, reaction to something, then it could be life-threatening, all right? Um, but once again, everything to do with medical, yeah, we can tell you, we, we can tell you. So if you're unsure, especially if it's something like, I mean, if, you, if you've got asthma, but not really, if you've got hay fever, but not really, like, don't think, oh, I, I might be turned away. I might not be eligible. Just apply. Well, we'll pay for the medical. We'll pay for that. That's not an issue. Yeah. And, and then our doctors will say yes or no. Cool. Uh, last question, and, and this is about you. So they're saying, what's the what's the highlight of your career, and what's been the hardest point, like of your? Oh, that's, that's thirty two years. Oh, okay, here we go. So, so probably one of the highlight. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to be I'm not going to be cringy and get me green beret and everything else, but that probably is. I mean, I I, I do have a child. All right, I do have a child. However, the green beret, <laughs> whoa, it, it, it's close. All right, so they can never take that green beret away from you. So it doesn't matter if you do four years, 20 years, 32 years like me, you you are a Green Beret. You, you are a commando, all right? And we have the Royal Marines Association. So once you leave, anyhow, we have another group of people you know, that you can fall into. And it's unique. It's unique. When you do 32 weeks and, and you do all the seasons throughout the UK confront you, you mean, the snow, the ice, the cold, the warmth, you know, the miserable weathers. Um, and it's good because when you look at somebody else with a Green Beret, you might not even know the guy, but you've been through the same. You've gone through the same you know, in, um, mud baths together and everything else. It's unique. It, it's someone that you look at and you know it's only somebody with a green beret can do. So uh, it, cr a little cringy, yes, probably my green beret many, uh, many, many moons ago. However, I was lucky enough to de uh, get deployed to a place called Diego Garcia. So Diego Garcia is in the Indian Ocean. Uh, it was one of the emergency landing sites for the shuttle. Yeah, when we had the, um, the big shuttles, all right. Uh, it's one of the longest runways in the world. And we have a nuclear subs. They go down there and everything else. This isn't all secret. It's all Google. So it's all fine. All right. Um, but it's a British Indian Ocean Territory. So it's called Bayer, British Indian Ocean Territory. Not a lot of people know about it. And I don't know why. There's over 100 islands. The biggest one is a place called Diego Garcia. It's, it's, it sounds very British, all right, Diego Garcia, but we own it. All right. So there's only us and the Americans on there. No civilians population only only the workforce so i was lucky to be on there for a, a year and a half all right um which you could imagine security during the day barbecue barbecues beach yeah it, it was unbelievable it, it really was so you mean know, some of the best memories i've had in the royal marines is probably that um and what was the other one what the, the worst times 
Yeah, the hardest part of your journey. The, the hardest part of my journey. Um, oh, yeah, probably. It, I, you know what? Um, without getting too morbid, nothing else. It is life, nothing else. I mean, um, we we go to war, we deploy, nothing else. Uh, and th- and the reason why I go is to make sure the guys to let them right and me come back. Uh, that's not always the case. It doesn't always happen. Uh, war is unfair. Um, but but one of my one of my best best men. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, he went to Afghanistan. He didn't come back, but um, I was privileged to take him off the aircraft uh, at, at Bryce Norton or line him at the time. Right, so that's probably one of the darkest moments uh, of my life. But you've always got to think of the good part. So we had a great time together and everything else. Yeah, uh, and everything else. And and he would have been like, ah, it's just get on with life. My life's too short. You've got to get on with it. All right. Um, life isn't fair. All right, but it's what you make of it. All right, and as I say all the time. Yeah, you know you're in the right career when you wake up most of the time with a smile on your face. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Mark. Uh, just before they all leave, what what do they have to type into Google then to to find out more about? Uh, just just do Royal Navy Royal Navy careers. Like literally Royal Navy careers. I know it's in the Marines, but if you type Royal Navy careers, it'll bring you up with that cover page that I showed you. Yeah, and on the right hand side, you'll see the word Marine tap yourself onto that and it'll just give you probably about 100 pages yeah load of links load of videos uh, you pre-join your fitness your eligibility and all the good stuff all right so just type in royal navy careers go to the right hand side of the, uh, the front page you'll see the word marine type that and then just have a good look all right you will be on there hours until you know brilliant thanks for that mark um 